Quinto Manifest working. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a rogue trader era Crimson Fist. So to start things off, I'm going to show you a list of all the paints I have used in this project with my assistant Enzo here. Working from left to right we have various paints from the Vallejo and Citadel line. I mostly use Vallejo model colour but you can also see there's a couple of air colours in there, a couple of Citadel paints and one Tamiya paint which I use for the blood effects later on. A little word of advice, don't be like me and put a snake on your work area because you'll find it goes around all the cupboards and wires and pipes and will knock everything over. It is a pain. So the first thing we're going to do in the project is take the miniature out of the baggie he came in. So here he is, the Old Hammer C100 Marine from the 1980s, sporting a worn paint job from the previous owner. I think this guy has painted him as a crimson fist, and I might add I do like the yellow screen he's painted on his wrist area there. Now, as much as I would love to keep it in those authentic colours, we do want to paint it ourselves, so that means we're going to have to stick him in the stripping bath. And this bath is a plastic pot containing some methylated spirits. I'm going to pop the lid back on and let this soak overnight. So it's been a good few hours now and I think it's time to get some of that paint off. So wearing my famous dishwashing marigold gloves, you really do want to make sure you're wearing gloves because this stuff is horrible when you get it on your skin. Use an old toothbrush, preferably not your wife's, and scrub the paint off. Sometimes you will find there's some annoying bits of paint which don't come out. So what I find is easiest here is to use a toothpick and just pick at it until it comes away, then put it back in for another soak. And after a couple of sessions in the stripping bath, the miniature is now ready to rinse off under the tap and then we'll let him dry. He's come out pretty well. He's not 100% clean, but I think he's clean enough. So I've noticed after the stripping that there's still a few mould lines on show so what I'm going to do is take my little file set here and have at them. What's really fun is that because this is an old soft metal figure these files really do rinse through these metal mould lines so they clean up really really easily. So what I'm going to do next is just give it another inspection, see if there's any more mould lines I might have missed and any other work that might need doing before I base this guy. And obviously there is one big job that definitely needs doing. So yes, you all guessed it, it's time to drill the barrel. So the first thing I'm going to do is use one of my smallest drill bits. I do apologize, I don't know the exact sizes to make a pilot hole for the gun barrel. Now you will see I spend a fair bit of time trying to make sure my drill bit is central to the barrel. This is essential so you don't go drilling off to the side and ruin your barrel. Once I'm happy with the positioning of my tip, I will commence the drilling. Now the next thing I do is take a bigger drill bit and open the barrel up some more. It's given it a kind of blunderbuss look. I quite like it. Now because I'm not going to put this miniature on a slotter base, I need to remove that tab. So I'm going to very gently give it a wiggle with a pair of pliers. As the metal's soft, it slowly, slowly wiggles and slowly comes away. Just be very gentle. And there you have it. Easy peasy. Now, as I want to bond the feet directly to the base, I'm going to file the bottom of his feet flat. I do wonder if this tickles him a little. 
Now it's time to pick a base for the miniature and originally I was going to use a 32mm base to give it a little bit more detail and then I realised this is a retro project so we have to be authentic. So we're going to go with the 25mm base. Also I think the 32mm base is just too big for this size miniature. These old marines, they're very small. Alright, so we're going to pop out the super glue. Now, I know it says new here on the bottle, but I'm pretty sure this is about 10 years old. So I have no idea if you can get this stuff anymore. It is actually a bit runny, so I would recommend a gel if you do have one. I add a little drop to each of the feet and spend a little time trying to get the miniature in a perfect placement on the base. There we go, I think that's quite nice. Now the next thing I'm going to do is give it a hose down with some super glue activator. And I tend to use the aerosol can as it works really, really well. You don't want that brush on stuff, it's terrible. Use the aerosol can if you can get one. And this will set your super glue in seconds. Just give it a little blow and you'll see the super glue turn like a white color. You'll see then it's dry. Now I don't think it really matters which activator brand you buy, I grabbed this stuff from eBay because it was quite cheap, but I do like the way the ghosty monster thing on the front reminds me of Slimer from Ghostbusters. Now being an old school miniature, we're going to base it in an old school method and the first thing we have to do is glue some texture to the base. And stupidly, I have run out of PVA glue, so this is the time to experiment. We're going to use some Winsor & Newton Galleria Matte Medium. Interestingly enough, it does look a lot like PVA glue, so I am feeling quite positive about this experiment. So what I'm going to do next is take an old paintbrush and paint this stuff neat all over the base taking care not to get it on the rim or on his feet. There you go, that's all been applied and you can see that does look a lot like PVA. I'm expecting good results from this. Now while that adhesive is still wet, we're going to dunk him into the texture and the texture in question here is a collection of various grade grits that I keep in a tub just for this purpose. Just dunk him in, give him a swish around and that should be done. Now sometimes you might find that your texture grit has somehow still gone onto the rim of your base. So all you have to do is just wipe it off with your finger. Done. It's now the time to seal that texture in. So what I would normally do is water down some PVA and paint it back over onto that texture. But again, we have no PVA. So I'm using some more of that matte medium. So I've just put it on an old manky palette, thinned it with some water and used a soft brush to dab it on, making sure that the grit soaks it all up. You can be quite generous with the medium here, but just make sure you don't disturb your texture too much. I've now left that for a good few hours. I would recommend leaving this overnight at this stage. And we are now ready to commence painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach it to a paint handle. I was just looking at my airbrush box here and it says on the back, if you're enjoying this video, then please like it and also subscribe to the channel. That means you, Gemma. Okay, to prime the miniature, I'm using Vallejo Model Color Black, heavily thinned through my airbrush. This allows me to get a nice smooth coat and doesn't clog up any of the detail. It also dries a really nice matte black, giving you a really good key for your paints later on. There we go, the miniature is now dry and I know that that black looks a bit grey here but that is due to how matte this paint is. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is using some Vallejo model color white, heavily thinned with a fair bit of flow aid, I then give it a zenithal prime from the top and a slight angle coming in from the sides. I wouldn't say it's quite 45 degrees, maybe around 30 to 40, somewhere around there to capture where the light would fall on the miniature. And this is how it comes out. I've given it a few thin coats. Some people swear by using a white ink at this stage because they think white paint won't thin properly, but it's really just a case of knowing how to thin your paints. You don't have to use ink. Also, I find that ink rubs off really easily, so I would recommend against it myself. Just use the white paint. It's now time to commence the base coating. So the first colour I'm going to use is Vallejo Model Colour Blue and give all the armour parts of the miniature a couple of thin coats. Duncan Rhodes would be proud. There we go, we have a nice solid base colour for our Crimson Fists. I really do love this colour for Crimson Fists and I really do love the Vallejo Model Colour line. I cannot recommend them enough. Another base coat up next and this time we are painting the metal parts of the miniature and the colour I have chosen to paint these is Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal. I use these air paints for my metallics because they're already a nice thin consistency which paints on really well. The silver metallics are now done, I've picked out the weapon and a few details here and there, such as the piping down his breastplate. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, as there's a big patch of silver metallics there, I want to break it up a little. So I've decided to use a coppery colour metallic next, and the colour I've used for this is Citadel Base Warplock Bronze. This paint needs a lot of thinning because it is very thick. So be careful with this one. Here you can see the copper colours applied and you can see how I've broken up all that silver. I think it's a lot more interesting like this. Now, using Vallejo model colour Basalt Grey, I then base coated all the little pouches around his waist and on his belt and the sheath for his little combat knife around his side. I tried to make sure that I had a good look around for any parts that would need this colour. There we go, all those grey parts are now painted and I'm quite happy with how this is turning out so far. Okay, so being a Crimson Fist's Space Marine, he has to have a Crimson Fist. So we have used Citadel Mephiston Red for the base coat of this fist. Always remember there is a thumb on the back here, although on this miniature it's not very well defined. We're going to add a little bit more colour to the miniature now and we're going to add some yellow. So the yellow I've chosen to use for the base coat is Citadel Averland Sunset. I've painted the little circular area on his shoulder pad which will house the chapter logo and the big pipe on the front of his weapon, which is apparently a disintegrator rifle. It's starting to look a lot more colourful now, although it still looks very flat indeed. But don't worry, there's still many, many more things we can do. So now all the base coats are on, it's time to start adding some contrast and depth. And we're going to achieve this by first applying some washes. And first up is all that blue armour. And the wash we're going to use for this is Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. This is a really nice dark blue. Now we've given that shade a long time to dry, it was probably an hour or two. Uh, just to make sure and you will see that it is a horrible patchy blue now but don't worry that's easily sorted out later down the line. I repeated this process now with another wash this time it was Citadel's Nuln Oil Wash and we've applied this to all of the metal areas, the grey areas and that coppery brassy area. We're not going to shade the yellow with it. However 
with Citadel's Reichland Flesh Shade, or is it Reekland? I never did know how to pronounce this name correctly. We're going to shade all the yellow parts. There's not a lot of these, it's just that yellow chapter logo on his shoulder pad and that yellow pipe we painted a little while ago. Now here's where the fun begins. All those washes are now dry and we're going to work on reapplying some base coats. First up it's the blue. So we're going to take our Vallejo model colour blue and start painting in all those blue areas again. And we're going to make sure we don't hit the recesses where that blue wash settled. Now I'm not entirely sure why but this is one of my favourite stages in the painting process. So there we go, that is the blue base all reapplied now, leaving the shade in the recesses. And I think you'll agree that's made a massive difference to the contrast, readability and tidiness of the miniature. Okay, it's now time for the first highlight on the blue. And I've made up my own personal little mix for this, uh, as in mixture of paint, not the band. So the mix is three parts Vallejo model colour blue to one part Vallejo model colour white. I've thinned this down a fair bit and I've applied it in a nice thick chunky highlight to all the edges of the miniature. I say miniature, I mean the blue parts of the miniature, not the entire thing that would look weird. Here you can see the miniature with the first highlight applied and I do think it actually looks quite nice like this. You could leave it here if you wanted to but of course we are going to push it further. For the second highlight layer I am using a mix of Vallejo model colour blue and Vallejo model colour white again but this time it's a one to one ratio. Again I've thinned it quite a lot to give me a nice smooth almost translucent finish. What I'm trying to do is paint half of the previous highlight, if that makes sense. Each layer is half the size of the previous layer. It can be very tricky and it can be very fiddly, but as with most things in life, practice makes perfect. Now with that second highlight layer applied, the miniature is really starting to pop, which is the term that all us hobbyists used when the miniature is starting to pop. I think we might have to do a whole video on what pop is. Would you like to see that? Let me know in the comments below. It's now time for the last blue highlight layer and this time we're going to reverse our original highlight colour mix. So this time we're going to use three parts white to one part blue. Again we're going to thin this down and try and be really careful with how we apply it right onto the very edges and we're going to try and paint this inside the previous layer. This can be very very tricky indeed but don't worry too much if you don't get it perfect. At the end of the day these models are going to be at arm's length most of the time especially if you're just going to be using your miniatures in games. So anyway that's all the blue finished for now and I think that looks quite snazzy indeed. It's time to work on the silver areas now, so we're now going to repaint the silver areas with Vallejo Model Air Gun Metal, making sure we leave the washed darker areas in the recesses. The next thing we're going to do is highlight the silver now, and the colour we're going to use for this is Vallejo Model Air Chrome. And much the same way as we made our highlights smaller on the blue, we're going to do it again with the silver. I just give the miniature a quick once over to make sure I haven't missed anywhere and then we can move on to the next colour. With the silver done, we're going to move on to the coppery bronzy colour. So again, we're going to rebase with warp lock bronze, making sure to avoid the wash in the recesses. With the base coat reapplied, we can now move on to our highlights. Now to highlight our warp lock bronze, I'm going to use Citadel Base Retributor Gold. A bit of an interesting choice I know, but we're going to follow the same style and just paint it inside the previous layer, concentrating on the edges. I'm going to call it there with the bronzy coppery bits, so now we have to pick another colour to work on on the miniature. 
Okay, so we're now going to work on the red areas, and we only have a small amount of red to do, and that is his fist and fingers. So we're going to reapply the base coat, which is Mephiston Red, and again, we're going to avoid those recesses. Well, that was a very quick stage, but again, don't forget that thumb behind the weapon. He does have five fingers, you know, or is it four fingers and a thumb? You tell me. We're going to highlight that red now, and the color I've used for the highlight is Vallejo model color, orange red. Now red's always a bit of a funny color to paint. Sometimes you'll find when you highlight it, it ends up looking either orange, or maybe a bit peachy, or maybe pink, and no one wants that. So I think the trick is to be very tidy and subtle with your red highlights. With the red areas complete, we're now going to move on to all those grey areas, which were his pouches and his knife scabbard. And his knife scabbard. Now we're going to reapply the grey, and in this case, it was Vallejo model colour basalt grey. Again, being sure we don't get any paint into those shaded recessed areas. So the grey base coat layer has been reapplied, and we're now going to move on to highlighting the grey. For our first highlight, we're going to mix in a little Vallejo model colour white into our basalt grey, giving us a lighter grey, and apply this to all the edges of the grey areas. Now, after applying that highlight, I figured that the figure probably needed a little more contrast on those grey areas, so we're going to add another brighter highlight. For this next grey highlight, I've just added some more white into our previous mixture, and I would guess that the ratio is around three parts white to one part grey here. On small areas such as this, you can always just eyeball it, rather than being very particular with your ratios. So that's another colour dealt with and out of the way, that's the grey done and dusted. Let's move on to another area of the miniature. It's time to attack that yellow. So using our Avaland Sunset, we're going to reapply our base layer over the top of the previous wash layer. Again, make sure you try to leave the recessed shaded areas. With the yellow base colour now reapplied, we can now move on to highlighting the yellow, one of my favourite stages in all of painting. Everyone loves highlighting yellow, right? Okay, so to highlight the yellow, I have used Vallejo model colour, lemon yellow, and this yellow reminds me a lot of the old Bad Moon yellow back in the day from Games Workshop, or I should say Citadel colour. Remember those paints? Anyway, that's actually going to be it for the yellow, so now we're going to move on to some details. First up, the shoulder pad studs. Okay, so when it comes to painting these shoulder pad studs, the colour we're going to use is Vallejo model colour black, and I've thinned this down a fair bit to make it flow nice and smoothly onto those studs. These are very small, so be very careful when applying your paint. Also, I do apologise for my dirty looking fingernails. They really did need cutting before I made this video. Oh well. So that's the base colour done anyway on those shoulder pad studs. It's now time to move on to another colour. And I wonder if you can guess what it is. If you guessed white, then you were right. Uh, we haven't gone for what a lot of people would assume would be silver. We've actually gone for white because, strangely enough, a lot of the old Rogue Trader Mark VI Marines had white shoulder pad studs. So we're going to be very careful in that we paint that little white circle inside the previous step's black circle. Take your time with this but it does look really cool when you've finished. We're getting very close to the end now, so the next thing we're going to do is paint the eyes. To paint the eyes, we're going to need to give them a little base coat again first, and in this case, we're going to use Vallejo Model Color White. And I do apologize for my big fat knuckle getting in the way of some of these shots. Just take your time when painting in those eye lenses and try not to get the white paint anywhere but inside those sockets. I've also painted the lens on the front of his disintegrator rifle. 
Okay, now, so, using some Vallejo model color fluorescent green, or green fluorescent as they refer to it themselves as, I've thinned this paint down quite a lot and painted it on those white areas we painted in the previous step. I let that dry and then just give it a couple more thin coats and that gives us a really nice glowing eye lens effect. This is always really easy, really quick and does look really good on the table. Now with this one, you almost want to go over the lines a little to give it that sort of object source lighting effect going on. Now to really punch in the brightness of those lenses and sell the glowing effect, we're just going to add a little white dot into the center of each lens. And that is it, that's the completed Imperial Space Marine. Now you will notice here that I've gone back and painted the base for the miniature and I've also added a few freehand details such as the chapter markings, the tactical markings on the shoulder pad, the helmet stripe and of course some blood effects on his weapons bayonet blade thing there. All in all I'm really happy with how this miniature has turned out and I cannot wait to paint some more old hammer miniatures and I hope maybe it's inspired some of you to paint some of your own. So there you have it, how to paint a rogue trader era crimson fist. What did you think of that painting guide? Have you ever tried to paint crimson fists? If so, how do you paint them? Anyway, when it comes to how we got on with this Crimson Fist, I'm quite happy with the results. Maybe if I did it again, I would probably want a little more contrast. I might start from a darker base coat and work up to an even brighter highlight. If you enjoy the content on this channel and you'd like to support us, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below. If you want to see some new, if you want to see some new, if you want to see some more painting tutorials, and I know you do, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. As always, thank you very much for watching, and always remember to drill your barrels.